Hey, it's Captain Roger. It's day 38. Let's go for a walk. You know, towards the end of the book of Leviticus, just after a long set of instructions about planting and harvesting, God makes an interesting statement that a lot of people miss. He says that no one is allowed to sell their land. Instead, they can only lease it to another for a limited period of time until it has to be returned to the original family. And God says that's because, in spite of appearances, the land isn't theirs. It all belongs to him. Any humans living on the land, God says, are strangers and foreigners. Means we are, at best, tenants. The Lord might permit us to sublet here and there, but the land remains his in all circumstances. Will we assume responsibility to care for it in the manner God commanded? And if we fail, God reserves the right to evict us and allow other tenants to move in in our place. Now, as far as the promised land goes, we see this happen later in history, particularly in the exile, where the new tenants, the Assyrians and Babylonians, move in and they evict the people of God from the land because they've repeatedly violated the terms of the lease. God gave the land, for a while anyway, to others. Which leads us to wonder two things. First, does this matter to our walk with God today? And if it does, what does it mean about how we should live? Well, to answer that first question, let me point out that divine ownership of the earth is never in question. It wasn't something set up by the covenant established by Moses or in any of the earlier covenants. And it's not something that Jesus disputes or changes in his dealings with us either. There's a psalmist in Psalm 24 who declares, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And the early Christians were reminded of this by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Corinthians, where he made it part of his argument that no one should seek their own good above the good of others. So it matters to us just as much as it has to everyone else God has permitted to live in his creation. And what does that mean about how we should live now? Well, in the Leviticus passage, it says we're supposed to provide for uh, redemption of the land. In the place and way that that phrase is used, it meant both the people responsible for the land needed to care for it, and that they needed to restore it to proper use if it had been misused. It also connects directly to a shared and equal economy that, frankly, both conservatives and liberals would probably find disturbing in its implication to their approach to wealth distribution. All of which puts us right back to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. Now, when you apply this to land use, this sounds a lot more like we have to put more effort into caring for the environment than we do. We may just wish to use our land to increase our profits, but it's not our land. And the profit we've received might be something that should have been made available to someone else. Hard thoughts to walk with as an American. But I suppose... I'm not really supposed to be walking with American ideals, am I? I'm supposed to be walking with God. I guess that's food for thought as I finish my walk today. Grace and peace to you all.